Hello and welcome to Live Coding with Bidush Academy. Today I will show you how to go through the whole documentation on beautiful soup with Python. Well, it's like literally going through the documentation and trying to see what it uh, provides. So, in order to get the documentation, we write beautiful soup for documentation in Google. And the first result is the documentation. From the other side of the screen, we have a um, Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Notebooks are great. I mean, they come with Anaconda, at least for me. You can simply write this and then press Shift Enter and you'll get the output too. Or you can say print, uh, for example, B. And it, of course, would throw an error not knowing what B is, so to say. Uh, yeah, so let's start from the beginning. What are we going to do with the beautiful soup? It is pretty much a Python library for pulling up data out of HTML and XML files. With other words, what does it do? It kind of makes magic out of the HTML that we are parsing and doing stuff. I mean, it can find anything out of a HTML file, let's say, just starting and explaining, let's say, this is our HTML file, shift enter. And whenever, for example, we, pray, we press HTML doc, shift enter, we get this one. This is how the strings work. But if we inform beautiful soup that this string is actually some web file, we can get a lot of data out of it because it would process it. So pretty much what we can do is we can insert it here, import beautiful soup. And then soup equals beautiful soup, then this HTML doc file. And then we say the second one, HTML dot parser, shift enter. Then we can say simply soup. And it looks like a little strange, pretty much the same like here, but we can use also soup prettify and it would be a bit better. It would look like this. Sub.prettify. Yes, now this looks like a well-formatted HTML file. So the soup library kind of understood that this kind of ugly string could be a web file. So let's go further and navigate. The soup also understands what is the title. For example, it says, okay, whenever you ask the title, I go to the whatever you gave me and I look for the title tags and I'll give you whatever is inside. It would be the same with the name, pretty much, of the title. You can go subtitle name, shift enter. The title name is title. Yes, here, title. Uh, it also has some parents. If we simply copy and paste it, so it should be, you should see that the title, the parent of the title is head. We can also do it parent dot parent name. And I'm expecting HTML exactly. And if we put parent once more, there should be an error, I guess, or it should be something like a document. Let's see. Yeah, document. Exactly. Uh, what else? We can say subtitle string and it, we get the domus story. You see, like it took the title and with the dot string, it, it took what is inside the title. That's great. Uh, we can also get the paragraphs from the soup. Yeah. The domus story, P plus. I think there is only one paragraph. Oh no. Mm, yeah, actually more. No, this is it. Paragraph story. Yep. Uh, what else is interesting? Soup A. Soup A is actually the links. I think we only have one ref. No, actually two refs. But it only gives the first one. See also the same with the paragraphs. So soup find all A. We'll give all the links and sub find op 
would give all the paragraphs. So this is really, really powerful if you need to find all the graphs or all the links. Pretty much. Also, you can search by ID. So link tree. I think there is only one link tree here in our soup. Yes, this one. Uh, yeah. One common task is extracting all the URLs found within a page A tags. Great. So, okay, I'm not copy paste. Although, full link in soup findo A. Uh, print link get ref and let's also print also link and see what happens shift enter so this is the ref and this is the link and we can also for example print also the class link dot class and then here we'll say print uh, three lines so we see the difference and okay print link dot class was a mistake. Yep. So in order to get the class, uh, it is not good. It is with the get, and then we say class. Mm, shift enter. This is what we get. Uh, yeah. Then we get the class. You can of course get the ID, for example, as well. Copy paste. get ID, shift enter, and we get the ID. And what if we want to see what is inside the string, inside the ref? Pretty much we want Tilly, Lassie and Elsie. We can say, uh, okay, get me not the ref, okay, not the text, but link.string. Like this, shift enter, and this is what we get, Elsie. Lassie and Tilly. Great. Okay, and the other, the last common task that we're gonna take a look at is extracting all the text from our page, pretty much. Soup get text. Yeah, and this is it. Like no tags, nothing. Everything look running smoothly. Dermal story. Uh, three little sisters, la 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 la, everything perfect. So installing beautiful soup, they are really step by step points how to install it and installing a parser, I wouldn't stop here. So let's start with making the soup. So in making the soup, we are going to write beautiful soup and then pass the sacre bleu, which is especially this one. The E is interesting, that's why it is passed like, like this. EA cute is uh, yeah obviously the HTML way to pass this type of E. Let's see what's going to happen. Sacred blue, okay. And the soup star put it simply in HTML with body and in paragraph. Then you put the sacred blue thing because of all these things here. They obviously say whenever you have ampersand, then EA cute, and then this uh, semicolon sign, then this is translated to this kind of E in the HTML. Okay, so kind of objects, pretty much soup. Let's see another thing. Beautiful soup. We, then we have the class borders extremely fold. Great. And tag would be soup B. Great. And the type of the tag would be BS4 element tag. Yeah, this is true. What if we say print so prettify? Just to see what we have done so far. Only out of this. And of course with the tag which is already now bold. It says extremely bold. Boldest class. Yeah, this is how the beautiful soap works so far. Um, we also have the names of the tags, the access loaded by the name um, property. 
and in this case series B we can also change it a bit like this and now if we say tag.name <coughs> is changed sorry further we have attributes yeah tag ID boldest yeah uh, of course it's a mistake because there um, are various tag key returns the value of the key attribute and in this case we obviously do not have it so let's see tag attributes class boldest okay then instead of tag.id we will put simply tag class in order to return something and it is boldest okay so it's written then we can add remove or modify tax attributes uh, this is done by treating tag as a dictionary yep tag is a dictionary yeah true for example like this mm. we already have tag id very bold and tag another attribute okay now if we say simply tag shift enter prints the whole dictionary that's the beautiful things that are brought to us by Jupyter and Python like in any other language that I know if you try to print a dictionary like this yeah like many in C sharp or on VBA you would get a massive error here you get something nice you can also delete but it's like removing from a dictionary so you can say delete tag ID and then you say I want to see again the tag yeah and the ID very bold is not here anymore you can also say uh, another attribute could be deleted but I'm not going to do it as far as it's pretty much the same okay multi-valued attributes so beautiful soup let's see it's CSS soup so um, CSS soup P is the parameter and we can ask a hey, what is the value of the class and it says the value of the class is body great um, another soup body strike out p class and here we can say uh, css soup yes because in this in this case this is what is the idea of the multi valued attributes and the css is a list actually yes and if you want to turn a tag into a string then we have multiple attributes values that are consolidated what does it mean let's see so related soup beautiful soup back to the index home page yeah this is quite a standard then we'll have relative soup i rel in this index great job and if we say relative soup rel and then print rel soup p what is going to get oh we're going to get the whole p which is also consisting other stuff yeah that's interesting well let's see what do we have in navigable strings uh okay take dot string take the string puts us always like uh, whatever is in the string in the tag, like uh, we have already had this somewhere uh, here with uh, lacy here, link string. Okay, so the same logic works with tag string. So, and we also can say, hey, I want to see the type BS4 element navigable string. Yeah, just like a Python Unicode string, except that it also supports some of the features described in navigating. And yeah, perfect okay so let's try this one unicode string unicode tag string unicode string and type of course it doesn't work like this i put print here in order to print both of them okay Unicode string, print Unicode string and print type. Uh, Unicode string and it didn't want to work because 
uh, probably tag string wasn't working. Let's see, no, tag string is working. Name Unicode is not defined. I see. No. Oh. So after some researches on this error, we find Stack Overflow. And the answer is rather good. We're going to give it to upvote Mr. Mountain Peters for whatever he says that Python renamed the Unicode type to string. And the old string has been replaced to bytes. Great. So we simply write like this. And we see extremely bold. Great. This was what we were interested in. And also class type. Yeah, it's obviously not Unicode anymore, but it's string. Uh, you can also replace with, let's say, tag string replace with no longer both, extremely both. And no longer both both. Yep. So let's con continue with the beautiful soup for documentation. So what do we get here? The beautiful soup object itself represents the document as a whole. Definitely. For more purposes, you can treat it as a tag object. This means that it supports most of the method described in navigating the tree and searching the tree. It's great. Okay, so let's simply try soup.name. Yeah, document. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Comments and other special strings. Okay. Markup. Hey, buddy, want to buy a used parser? Definitely not. So we soup this and we write also comment string and we say type comment. Yeah. Pretty much it's common. Uh, I'm interested just to see the soup here. Yeah, okay, it is like this HTML, body, bold, and then hey, buddy, want to buy a used parser? Yeah, works. Pretty decent to me. Yeah, uh, we can also make it nice by prettifying it, obviously, and it puts correctly the things here. Yeah, uh, okay. Not sure I have C data. I have C data because I have installed C data. Okay, let's see. What are we going to see with C to do with C data? C data is actually something that might show up in the XML document, so uh, yeah. You simply say okay, comment replace. Uh, Anybody want to buy some used parser with C data, but it's not what I was looking to get. It was, let's try it once again. And again, an interesting error cannot replace one element with another. When the element is replaced, it's not part of the tree. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's, uh, Take this once again here, put it here, and shift enter. Okay, great. C data, C data block. It's pretty, pretty decent. Okay, you can only take the comment. What the comment would be? This would be a correct one. Uh, okay, yeah. So next, navigating the tree. So getting the tree sisters. It's probably like a Dutch. Uh, story from Groningen, there is a bar called the Three Sisters in Groningen. So back to there. Uh, let's see what we can do. We can say going down. Can tags may contain strings and other tags. -la 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 -la. Okay, soup head. Soup head is something we have done a bit earlier. And also soup title. Interesting so far. Soup body B. This would give us all the bold parts, I guess. And soup A would give us all the interesting parts as well. Okay, soup find A, something we have done. And let's take a look now at the contents and the children. Soup head. Let's see this head tag. Great. Contents. This is what is in the contents. 
because it is a list, the contents, it would give us now the first one, of course. So let's continue. Okay, we can put, of course, length of the sub contents, and there are two of them. Interesting, here they are one. What if we go sub contents here? Hmm, that's really interesting. Why there are two, and we get one. Probably we have changed something in the contents. Let's see what these contents are. Okay, let's see what the zeroth one. Ah, see, okay, and this is the first one. Yeah, okay, that's why the length is one. Okay, makes sense, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can also loop through the children. So for every child in the title back children print child. Uh, let's first see what title back children will give us. Okay, this is like simply a object. What about title back? Okay. So in this case, uh, we would simply have one child. This would be the Darmio story, this one. But it could be that we also have more. Okay. So now we go to the descendants head tag contents. Yeah. So for each child in home head tag descendants. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. Interesting stuff. We get both of them the title, the Domio story, and the Domio story. Mm. If we go to head tags, this is what we get the Domio story. We get those title, Domio story. If we had like one more, we would have more children, but okay. Uh, let's go to strings, title, tag, string. Okay, this one. We know what would give definitely title tag contents and title tags and uh, head tag contents and head tag string is going to do the same. I'm just zooming a bit more, mm, less. Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, so soup HTML string is going to be none. And now we're going to take a look into strings and string strip strings. For strings in substrings print a okay, per string. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Okay, per guys, the representation. So this is like a new line, new line, new line, new line, new line after the comma, and new line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the white space? Soup strip strings. Yeah, this is how it looks like the drawing story. And we have a lot of interesting stuff. Okay, going up. Let's say going up is speaking about a family tree again. So we can get the parent tag of the item that contains it. So let's start soup tag subtitle. Great. And the title tag is this one. And if we go like this parent, we would get a uh, little new story title head. And if we add here the parent parent, we will get the whole document. And if we go even once, just interested. Okay, once we go to the biggest parent ever, we keep on continuing him. Like, no, no. Okay, so it's, let's see, what about here, what about here, what about here, okay, shift enter, yeah, okay, this is the biggest parent that actually makes sense, title, title tag string parent, okay, so title tag was this one, title tag string was this one, and title tag string parent should be, yeah, this one. So it also makes kind of sense here. Yeah. The parents of the top level tag like HTML 
is the beautiful object itself. Kind of believe it. Yeah. BS4 beautiful soup class. Great. And the parent of the beautiful soup object is defined as none. Oh, well. Makes sense. And none doesn't have a parent, definitely. Okay, let's see all the links. So for parent in link parents, uh, what do we do there? If parent is none, print parent, else, and we have this column, print parent name, pbody html document, <laughs> and I didn't get the none here, but okay. So going sideways, this is the best one going to see the siblings. Let's see. Sibling soup, pretty fine. So we have A, B text. These are like the sides, the side, this uh, sideways are A and B. And then we have, uh, and we also have C. Okay, so we have like this B and C are siblings. And A is the parent, the way I see it. Yeah. So sibling B, next sibling. It's takes two. And sibling A, next sibling. It's obviously nothing. Sibling C, next sibling. Should be nothing. What about sibling uh, B, next sibling was this one. There should be also a previous sibling, sibling C, previous sibling. And yes, we get this one. Exactly. Previous sibling and next sibling are described here. Uh, then we go sibling soup B string. Let's see what it copies. Text one. And we also print this kind of stuff, but it would return none, so I'm okay with not printing it. So, let's see. Link is the soup all links. Then we have all these links. Next link. For sibling and soup, a next sibling, print representative sibling. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> and for sibling and soup, stop find sibling. Previous siblings, yes, these siblings are interesting. Okay, going back and forth. Uh, HTML had title, drum story. P title, drum story. Yeah, okay. We can get next element and previous element quite easily. For example, next sibling would always give us the next. So the next sibling is set of B here is this one, text two. Okay, searching in a tree. This really looks like algorithms, but I hope I can pass it easily. Let's see. Uh, what do we get here? Soup find OB. The Dormus story. Interesting story, as I said. This is the B and it searches quite well. Yeah, regular expression. Import regular expression. Let's see whether I have it. I think I have it installed. Yes. So for each tag in soup find O, recompile B. This means that. Uh, there should be something instead of B, I mean, I don't know. So this uh, kind of small thing is actually a position anchor in regular expression. So pretty much we only look for a regular expression which starts with B and that's it. So let's see. Uh, and also it should be a ref. So tag pretty much. Mm, and we can take a look at our B. Yes, this one. Realized this is a tag and it prints it. Okay. And let's uh, finish. Let's say 
speak about the list oh, and finish probably yeah for tagging a sub find over a compile to print tag name great HTML and title decided to tag name uh, the ones that obviously contain the letter T mm. let's see what happens if we this uh, find all tags print tag mm. yeah these are all the tags HTML head title body P B P A A A P. Yeah, these are the tags that we have. Uh, okay, so a list uh, sub find all A and B. Yeah, great. And it gives us all the bold things and all the refs. Great. And we can also say sub give us all A B and uh, let's say head as well. And we add also the head. Great. Okay. And uh, what else can we get uh, for tag in sub find all true? Okay, I pretty much get exactly this one here without the true part. If I put the true, it should be the same. Yes. And with functions, I will continue later. I just noticed that it goes a bit more than 30 minutes, so it's kind of a good introduction, I guess, for beautiful soup. And if you are interested, I would be also interested to see any comments below in my video. So thank you for watching and thank you for staying up to here and enjoy your day. Have a great day. Bye bye.